How we doing guys? I'm Steez from NetsGC and today I want to take you guys through a video and kind of help you guys with your defensive badges and how I personally kind of rank all these badges. So there's 16 total going into the whole defensive category and sometimes it's overwhelming especially when you get to the tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 lists. Um, and then at the end of the day, you have to realize that there's core badges and the core badges we'll talk more towards the end of the video and, and how we'll set that up. But if we get right into it, if, as you guys can see on the chart, I have my S tier, which are going to be our best badges. Um, A will be also pretty good. B and C will be more of your hit or miss kind of badges, more preference. And then I put a luxury tab as well on here. And that's for strictly maybe it doesn't really help out that much maybe it's just more for fun in the park um maybe it's just a personal preference anything like that but more of a luxury meaning you're going to be spending some defensive badge points on it but it's not necessarily going to help you out more than another badge so if we get into badge number one ankle braces right off rip i'm probably going to throw this on on the c level um just because i feel like that's more of a, a lockdown kind of badge i think for power forwards especially if you're on the back end of a pick and roll the last thing we're going to really be worrying about is, is our ankles getting broken i think as a professional power forward one of the things that i kind of focus on is if, if my ankles do get broken in a possession i'm not thinking to myself like wow i wish i would have had that badge i think more to myself like you know what it is what it is we we give them that possession and and we move on to the next one now as 2k23 moves forward if it's a continuing trend and we kind of realize like okay we're gonna need ankle braces because it seems like our we're getting our ankles broken by pgs every single play then we adapt and if that's the case then i would move ankle braces maybe up to an a but as of right now from what i've seen from 2k and and how i've been playing lately in competitive pro-am i don't see ankle braces being that necessary so that's kind of what i think about that badge definitely more of a, a lockdown kind of badge uh, the next one I would go with is Paint Beast, or, uh, or sorry, Box Out Beast, which I think is huge, huge, huge for power forwards this year. I think I've been using it a couple times, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but my biggest fear is if I didn't have it on. So right now, I'm putting it as an S-tier badge just because some of these centers that you're going to be trying to box out in competitive pro-am are very strong They're, they put their strength damn near max and you're going to need box up beasts right now in my on my actual build i have it on silver if you can get it to gold maybe even hall of fame i think it might be what you want to go with for now there are a lot of worms going on so hopefully maybe there'll be a patch that might buff it the box up beast a little bit but right now for me i prioritize it a lot so i'd have it on the s tier the next uh, badge that we're going to go with on your defensive badges is Glove. This is more, if I was going to throw this in somewhere, I'd probably throw this as a luxury. I think that on-ball steals are pretty glitchy right now going into 2K23. That doesn't mean that it's not going to get patched, but Glove is kind of another lockdown badge. Um, I think if you're going to have it as a power forward, it's more of a luxury because I think there's more badges that we really do need to be a successful power forward um, in this comp scene. And like I said, if you're playing park and you want to have more fun with it, maybe gloves the badge you want to go. Maybe you get switched on the ball a little bit more and you want to take a couple reaches at the point guard. Then that's the badge that you want to go with. But like I said, more of a luxury badge. You kind of have some fun with it. Maybe you like just getting some on ball steals and and padding the stats, but um, nothing more, nothing less and probably just more of a luxury badge. Now, Menace is an interesting badge because Menace kind of reminds me of what Intimidator used to be. And if I read you guys exactly what it is, so for Menace, it says, while guarding and staying um, in front of an opponent, their attributes will drop if good defense is being played. So it kind of reminds me of what Intimidator used to be back in the day. I wouldn't throw this at S because it's not the end-all be-all. Like, you're not going to have this on and, and be able to just get amazing contests all the time and this this guard that you're contesting is never going to be able to green it no they'll still be able to green it so menace to me is more of like a like an a or b kind of badge where i have it right now i would throw it as an a just because we are defensive players this is kind of our contest system is with this badge so i'll throw it right there and there will be another badge coming up later on that the two seem like they go hand in hand but for now i'll throw it at a it's going to be how you get most of your contests and you know that's part of what we do as a power forward sometimes you have to step up off the screen and and contest that point guard or you know sometimes you're this is going to be your contest in the paint um so yeah i like it at a i think it's a good badge for us so right now our top two badges are box out beast and menace the next one we're gonna go with is off ball pest this is a super luxury badge super luxury badge the only way I really see us having this on is if 
your team is struggling and you know you're going to go against a shooting guard in pro-am that's very good and they're going to throw the power forward on the shooting guard that's the only way i really see it going on i guess maybe you want to throw it on to like compete with the center when he's trying to roll and you give him a hard time with that i don't really use off ball pests i'll be real i don't really know too many power forwards that do um i mean if you guys do comment below and let me know but i've never really heard of too many competitive pro-am or yeah competitive pro-am power forwards that are using this so i'm gonna throw it in the luxury uh right away now if i was a shooting guard and i was playing up top on defense and you know leaking on the breaks off ball pest might be good because sometimes you're dealing with those shooting guards that you're trying to guard that are dexing off ball they're setting off ball screens for him off ball pest might be fine there but as a power forward i think we're just going to leave this as a luxury badge and if you have it good for you maybe let me know how you guys use it maybe let me know how it works for you but for right now we're just going to leave it there uh pick dodgers next badge straight up luxury now if this was a lockdown uh defensive badge tier system right here pick dodger might be up at the s tier but for us power forwards we don't need it same thing if we get screened in a play we tip our cap we move on to the next one is what it is it's kind of like um how we talked about ankle braces if we get our ankles broken we move on if we get hit by a big body screen it usually shouldn't be happening like that because our man is supposed to be the center so technically the center's not supposed to be able to set screens on us so super luxury move on to the next one post lockdown this gets interesting this all depends on, I feel like, the center that you're going to go against. So if you're in the park, we'll, we'll go both game modes. If you're in the park and you're going against, let's say, a center that's a post score, full-blown, pure post score, you know he's going to try to go to work. He's going to try to work out from the free throw line and do a bunch of post moves, uh, drop steps, hook shots, whatever it might be, things like that. And you feel like, I need to be able to clamp him up. This is the badge for you. I'm going to throw it at B. I'm not going to throw it at S or A because I don't think it's super, super necessary. But I'm not going to throw it at C or Luxury because I do feel like you need a little bit of it. I think a good bronze, maybe silver max for post lockdown. And if you're going against the best post score in the world, sure, let's bump it up to gold. But besides that, I think it's a good spot right there. It's definitely going to help them not back you down as much, help you get some stops in the paint. Now, don't get me wrong. That post lockdown badge is not the end game, meaning like, once you go against a pure post score, just because you have that thing on gold or Hall of Fame does not mean you're going to get stops. They've made these post scoring builds very glitchy, very good this year. It's going to be tough no matter what, but this post lockdown badge will definitely help a little bit with the case. Next one I go with is Workhorse. I love this badge. If you guys want to know what this badge really comes down to, it's basically how Hustler was last year. Workhorse, that, that loose ball's on the ground, you be moving towards it. Sometimes it feels like you kind of teleport towards the badge. I love it, or towards the ball. I love this badge. I have it on gold right now uh, as my as my power forward, and I feel like when the loose ball's on the ground, I, I be moving towards it. I get it all the time. Let's say you miss a rebound and it keeps bouncing, especially in park. Your guy seems to like levitate towards the ball. I think it's a great badge, especially when you're a power forward, because when you're on the back end of the pick and roll, let's say let's say your lockdown, for example, plucks the point guard and the ball's rolling around. And it's like you in the center having to go for it. Most of the time, if you have the higher workhorse badge and you're in a better position, you're gonna get that ball. Um, I love that badge, and especially when you're a, a power forward or a lockdown that's very defensive minded and you need to secure the ball for your offense, that that's the badge that's gonna do it for you. So right now I'm holding that at A, and I think it's a great badge. Uh, next one is challenger this is the badge that i was kind of talking about that's going to go hand in hand with your menace badge right here uh, i have this on silver right now i'm actually going to throw these two kind of just right on top of each other so if we go to challenger what it says for these is it says improves effectiveness of well-timed contests against perimeter shooters so this is obviously more of a perimeter uh defending badge instead of the inside where menace might be able to work for both but challenger i feel like if you're a power forward usually on the back end of the pick and roll and your center lets or let's say your lockdown gets screened by by a hall of fame brick wall center and you have to pick up and they're shooting as you're picking up this is going to be the badge for you Th this is the one that you want to make sure you always have um and so i put these two together and i think this is huge because anything that has to do with defense contesting shots deciding whether a shot becomes a yellow or a red contest i i, I highly prioritize that as a power forward or a lockdown so we're gonna throw that up at a i don't know if it fully consists of being at an s tier but i like it at an a right now this is where things get funky if this was last year's build i would have said chase down would have been really big for us but this year it seems like chase downs aren't really a thing 
and I've been having my chase down anywhere from silver to gold, and it seems like it's kind of 50-50 with 2K right now. It, it seems like if we, if I had the badge on, like I said, I've tried it, and I wasn't getting crazy animations, and then I've taken the badge off, had no chase on ours, and still got some blocks. So it kind of seems like right now it's up to 2K23's hands. If you're in a decent spot, yeah, that's going to be your best opportunity, but... I haven't seen a huge difference between having it on gold or not having it at all. Now, I'm not going to th fully throw it on luxury because as a power forward, there's a lot of instances where we are chasing down point guards. But the consistency that I've seen from this badge being on gold all the way to none is it's kind of a crapshoot. You're kind of just praying to the 2K gods that they're going to help you get a block. But I haven't seen a difference either way. So I have it as a C for now. Maybe it gets buffed, and if it does, then we will plan accordingly and move this up the ranks to maybe a, a, an A or a B. Um, this badge will probably never be an S tier unless it was like maybe 2K20 or 2K21 where those those chase downs were actually uh, very souped and glitchy. So right now I'm going to leave it as a C just because I'm not seeing too many chase downs this year. And we'll move on to the next one, which is Clamps. Clamps is another interesting one, but I think that I usually have it as, as, as about a B because it's not super necessary where we absolutely need it. This is more of a lock badge at the end of the day. You guys kind of know that uh, this is where when lockdowns get their bump, this keeps them on them. Uh, this keeps that attachment at the hip and it's a great badge for lockdowns. As a power forward, I always keep this out of out, out, of, out of bronze just in case I don't want no point guard running into me and they're just getting blow buys on me. But I also don't think it's something where we have to have it as like an S tier and A tier where we have it as like a gold or a Hall of Fame badge. We use this as a bronze and it's more of like an insurance plan where it's like, okay, if I get put on the point guard, this is perfect for me because I'll have just enough clamps where they can't get a full blown blow by on me. But I'll be on their back hip to where I can always get hopefully a nice block or a nice bump steal or just in a spot where I can get a good contest on their shot. I like it here at B. Maybe you guys have it a little bit higher. Maybe you guys have it a little bit lower. Maybe none at all. Maybe you guys don't even like having this badge on as a power forward. Um, I've always liked it just at bronze. I think it, it, it's a good little happy medium. So yeah, interceptor badge. This is it. This is the one, guys. This is what we pride ourselves on. And this is what I also think that, like I said, we'll talk later about it, but my core badge will probably might turn into one of these because right now when I look where I'm at on the scale, I'm close to the core badge on my interceptor. But when you're on a when, when you're at, when you're a power forward and or center and you're on the back end of a pick and roll, this is your badge that is going to steal all those lane passes. The second the second that center rolls behind you and you're playing the the sweet spot between the free throw line and the point guard, this is where you steal all your passes. And if you do not have this thing on gold, you will be tipping the pass. You might even miss the pass. It's going to be tough either way. But interceptor on the max amount that you can put it on whether that's gold or hall of fame you need this as a power forward you got to think sometimes your garden pick and roll they send a backdoor cut from the corner they send a backdoor cut from the wing you got to be able to steal those and the interceptor badge is the thing that's going to give you the best animations to make plays for your team to get them to the ball switch that camera around and be on offense so i love this badge i pride myself on playing the lanes really well i pride myself on the steals i think with the, this badge it helped me average 2.5 steals a game this year in the 2k league so this is a huge one for me. Automatically goes to S tier. Love this badge. So yeah. Next one, Anchor. Huge badge this year. I've seen some crazy things already and, and they haven't even been maxed out. So what Anchor does, for those of you who don't know, it's a tier three badge this year. Meaning that's one of the best badges in the defensive system. Increases the player's ability to block shots and protect the rim at a high level. So let me tell you guys this. When I first started my build and we hopped into rec and we started playing, these 7-3 centers were kind of getting away with whatever they wanted in the paint. And then I started throwing on a little bit of anchor, and it seemed like that ball was bouncing off the rim. They'd be missing dunks. I'd be getting some blocks, getting good contests. This is the badge if you feel like you're going to be going against some big hosses in the paint, and you're going to really have to hold it down. I love the badge. It kind of reminds me just of Rim Protector. I'm pretty sure that's just what it is. It's the, it's, it's the new variant of Rim Protector in the past 2Ks. But love anchor. It's what we're going to need to stop these centers. If you go into a game without anchor and you're guarding pick and roll, you're going to have a tough time. You're going to have to be calling a lot of triangles and a lot of stacks and a lot of rotations to get your center in the paint because I do not think you're going to be able to hold it down as well without the anchor badge. Next one is Brick Wall for a power forward. Unless you are a park player. If you are strictly just a park player, then Brick Wall needs to pretty much leave. Like, if all you do is play park, sure, you can have it at SRA. But if you are a pro-am player, this is a luxury badge. We This damn near should be in the F. But 
luxury 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 i don't know a power forward that really has this on now if i switch over and i'm playing a full day of just park sure i'll throw a brick wall in but as a competitive pro-am player brick wall is not necessary we are not setting screens like that maybe the one or two opportunities that your point guard calls a play and he wants you to set it on off ball screen for somebody sure but still we do not need brick wall i think for that one or two plays we could set a big enough body to get somebody open now if i'm a center yes hall of fame throw it on we need it we got to get our point guard open but as a power forward we're not setting screens so so let's move on from that pogo stick all right this one might you guys might not like me for this one i'll throw this one at the c and i'll tell you why is it a good badge sure is it a little glitchy yes and can it help you get some stops of course here's my thing if i wasn't if i wasn't in the nba 2k league i would probably use pogo way more the reason i don't is because i like to condition myself to get ready to not have to rely on it because in the nba 2k league we don't get the the luxury of having pogo stick so there's no point in in my pre-draft in my off season to use pogo stick a lot on my build because i know i'm never gonna have to rely on that in the actual league now that being said if i wasn't in the league oh i would bump that thing up to about the a level because why not you know what, what do i have to lose you might as well jump for joy but that's basically what it is it, you know when you jump it lets you keep jumping in the paint to try and get some stops um but yeah realistically i probably would throw it in the luxury but when i do play park i'll throw it on sometimes you know it's park we're having fun out there but that's basically what it is it it, it pretty much should fall in the luxury tab but i'll give us the benefit of the doubt we'll throw up to the c i know a lot of you guys use it i know it's fun especially when you have it on hall of fame because you're just bouncing around like a bunny but more times than not it's just kind of a fun badge to have on nothing more serious now rebound chaser as a power forward i know, this is tough because there's the nudinis of the world who would probably throw this as an s i'm gonna throw this as maybe an a badge because and here's why it's not that i don't think that it's it's a huge necessity to get a board i really do and that's why i know some power forwards would throw this as an s i'm throwing it as an a because my primary goal as a power forward on the pick and roll is to be boxing out i try to box out the center and let my and i try to box out the opposing team center and i let my center go grab it now are there times where i have to go get the board yes that's why i throw it at the a you still got to know how to go grab a board but for the most part, I really do think that we should prioritize as a power forward boxing out. Now, there's other maybe you have a different kind of team dynamic where your center's the one who box out and your power forward is the one who has to go grab the board. Then sure, we'll throw you it up to an S there. But for how I like to run this, I think my rebound chaser would always be on more of the A tier system for me. Because I like to prioritize the box outs, let my teammates grab the boards, and let's get out on the break. Um, I think that's the best way to kind of do it. Now, the last thing I kind of want to talk to you guys about is your core badges your core badges you got to figure out what you guys want them to be what you guys think your game best replicates if i had to guess what i think everybody's power forward tier three core badges should be it should be anchor and rebound chaser if you could make it those two great if if you had to pick one then i like anchor because i think you got to be able to rim protect and i think it's a great badges here honestly it's your rim protector badge you need that as a power forward but the best part about it is for me gold gold anchor badges cost seven points on the defense and rebounding scale now if you have that as a core badge it automatically gives you seven points back meaning it's a free anchor badge that's huge so if you guys can get your anchor badge or even like i said the rebound chaser badge as your core badge then it'll cost you about six or seven points as well for the gold take that away and add it to something else i feel like that's huge and that's kind of the whole concept of that core badge this year um, I hope this kind of helped you guys out a little bit. We're going to be doing other badges and other tier systems later on. I know we have Streets, who's our lockdown for NetGC. We're going to get him in here with me. We're going to kind of talk about some badges as well for the lockdown side of it. But I hope this helped you out as a power forward or as a big man in NBA 2K23 to kind of tell you guys what badges to really prioritize um, as a competitive power forward or center. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Like I said, we're going to get back to it. So make sure you guys follow all our social medias. Follow us, subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitter, follow on Twitch, Instagram, TikTok. That's where we'll be posting a lot of our content and a lot of our help videos to kind of get you guys over that hump into that next level to get some more stops on defense. But I appreciate it, guys. Have a good one.